Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over an explanation of Ohm's Law. I also have videos that I've made for example problems for solving Ohm's Law problems, and also an explanation and example problems for resistance, resistivity, and also for electric current. You can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Please don't forget, before we go on, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the video. And then don't forget, click on the notifications bell. Get notified when I post a new video. Okay, now here we go. Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law simply says that V equals I times R. It says that the voltage, which is measured in volts, is equal to the current, which is measured in amperes, times the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Ohms is abbreviated with this symbol, which is the Greek letter omega. Now that is all very well and good, but what is more interesting is really the relationship between the voltage of the circuit and the resistance of the circuit. So we can take this equation, simply rearrange it, and say that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Remember, the voltage is thought of as the force, the pump, the push that is pushing the current through the circuit, and R is for the resistance, which is resisting the flow of electric charge through that circuit, and they're kind of working opposite of each other. One is pushing to get increase the current, and one is kind of pushing back to resist the flow of the current. I'm going to try and show you that in one of the excellent simulations from PHET simulations. If you're teaching or learning, they have excellent simulations for math and science, check out their website and check out their simulation. So let's go over and look at that. Okay, now here is the simulation that we have. And once again, this is from PHET simulations. And we have here that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. That's Ohm's law, of course. We have a simple circuit down here. We have batteries for our voltage. We have a reading for the current. It's currently 30 milliamps. This is our resistor and these arrows are showing the direction of the current. And we are going to look at the relationship between the voltage and the current and then the resistance and the current. We're going to start out with the voltage, and what we're going to do is we're going to increase the voltage. So you'll see the voltage here, you'll see the voltage here, and you'll see the increasing voltage here as the V gets bigger, and we want to notice what happens to the current, okay? So what do you think is going to happen when we increase the voltage? When we increase the voltage, you will notice that the current increases. And you can see that graphically here because the I is getting bigger. You can see that here because the current is now 47 milliamps instead of 30. And you can see that here because these arrows are getting bigger. Okay, so when we increase the voltage, we increase the pressure on the current, then the current is going to increase like that. And when we decrease the voltage, then the current is going to decrease like that. So the voltage and the current, they have a direct relationship. They're directly proportional to each other. Increasing voltage, increasing current. Decreasing voltage, decreasing current. Okay, and we can go back to our presentation and I can show you that right here on this slide. We'll summarize that. We saw that when the voltage increased, the current increased. When the voltage decreased, the current decreased. And that is what we call a direct relationship, or we can say that the current and the voltage are directly proportional to each other. The current is directly proportional to the voltage. Okay, now let's go back to our simulation and see how that looks with the resistance, okay? So now we're gonna change the resistance. We can increase and decrease the resistance. We wanna see how that affects the current. What do you think is going to happen when we increase the resistance? Well, you'll see that resistance is increasing. It was 100. Now it's going up 200, 300. The R is getting bigger. And when we increase the resistance, you'll notice that the current decreases. More resistance, less current. If we decrease the resistance, then you'll notice that the current increases. So those have an opposite relationship. Increasing resistance, decreasing current, decreasing resistance, increasing current. And you can see that here is the current reading and the size of the arrows for the direction of the current. 
Okay, that means that those two factors, the resistance and the current, are inversely proportional. And we can go back to our presentation and show that here we have the current decreases when the resistance increases. And if we decrease the resistance, then the current goes up. And that means that the current and the resistance are inversely proportional. And we can say that that is one, the current, excuse me, one, that is the current is inversely proportional to the resistance, okay? So that's an important understanding of the relationship for Ohm's law, that as we increase the voltage, the current increases, as we increase the resistance, then the current decreases, all right? Now, we have a good a little uh, mathematical uh, thing we can use here. This is often referred to as the Ohm's law triangle. You can use it for other equations, but it's often used for Ohm's law. We have V equals I times R. We want to be able to arrange this equation to solve for I and R. And you can use this little helper here. We have a triangle, and we're going to put the letters, the symbols for Ohm's law in. We have I times R. They're next to each other, so we put them down here. And the voltage goes on the top just like that. Now, we want to be able to rearrange this equation to solve for I and R. Now, you can do that algebraically but you can also do that using the Ohm's Law Triangle. When we have two things that are next to each other, we're going to multiply them. So we're going to multiply I and R. And when we have the voltage over the current or the voltage over the resistance, then we're going to divide. Now, first, we would want to be able to solve this equation for I. Now, what I tell my students is draw the Ohm's Law Triangle, take your pen, your pencil, your finger, and put it over the I. And when you cover up the I, what's left is V over R, or V divided by R, and that means that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Now we can do the same thing for the resistance. We can simply write down R equals. We could cover up the R. And you'll notice that we're left with V over I, which is the same thing as V divided by I. It looks like a fraction, kind of like. And so we would say that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. And of course, you can do the same thing just to confirm with the voltage, cover up the voltage, and you'll see as we have up here, V equals I times R, V equals I times R, and there you have all three equations for Ohm's law. You don't have to memorize the equations, all you have to do is be able to use the Ohm's law triangle. Okay, I think that's very helpful. My students like that very much. Okay, now we're going to do a couple simple problems using Ohm's law. Here we have a simple circuit. We have a nine volt battery, a nine volt source, and we have three resistors, one, two, three, and they are in parallel with each other and in parallel with the battery. R1 is seven ohms, R2 is 15 ohms, and R3 is 12 ohms. And we want to be able to figure out what is the current through each branch of that circuit. One, two, and three. Well, we are going to use the Ohm's Law Triangle we have right there, and we want to solve for the current, and that tells us that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Now, if you know something a little about parallel and series circuits, this is parallel, you'll know that the voltage across each of these resistors is the same, and it's equal to the battery, but that they each have their own resistance. So therefore, we have I1, I2, and I3. If you want to figure out the current through one, then you have to use the voltage across resistor number one and the resistance of number one. The same thing for two, you use the voltage and the resistance of two. Now, they all have the same voltage, but they have different resistances. So this one would be nine divided by seven, which gives us a current of 1.29 amperes. For I2, it's still 9 volts, but now we have 15 uh, ohm resistor, and that gives us a current of 0 0.6 amperes. And then we have a voltage of 9 volts for V3, and the resistance of resistor number 3 is 12 ohms, and that gives us a current of 0 0.75 amperes. And those values should make sense because we have the lowest resistance, which is 7 ohms, and that has the highest current because remember, the current and the resistance are inversely proportional to each other. Lowest current, lowest resistance, highest current. The one with the highest resistance, which is number two, has the lowest current like that. Okay? So that's how we can use that for simple circuits. 
and for solving for the current. And we can have another example here where we're going to solve for the resistance. This is the hot water heater. And we have Ohm's law V equals I times R. And we can say that that hot water heater is plugged into a voltage source, which is 240 volts and has a current running through it, which is 13.5 amperes. And of course, we want to know what is the resistance of a heating element inside that hot water heater. We're going to get out our Ohm's law triangle. We're solving for R. R is equal to V divided by I, the voltage divided by the current. The voltage is 240 volts. The current is 13.5 amperes, and that gives us a resistance of that resistor inside that hot water heater of 18 ohms. Okay, so there you go. That is an explanation of Ohm's law, the relationship between the voltage and the current and the resistance in the current, and also a couple simple problems for us to work on. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.